to play a role. It's just, so what if you did it three times in a row? Right. You're just that good at it. Knock it out the park every time you do it. Do it better than the last one. Right. <laughs> then if that's the case, right? Yeah. And then if you and then it's the same cliche. Be the be the change you want to see. Cause then that's when they want you to start getting more creative. Like that's yeah. where I'm starting to tap into with my craft now. Like I want to get into the writing and producing more. But I'm, I'm glad I've been through this journey, this 20 plus years, yeah. you know, lo like really loving it, like being in front of that camera, like yeah. it, it don't get old to me, you know what I'm saying? And um, so like, we we almost was winging it to answer your question with like how we laid it out there. Hype did lay it out there for us, but with all that gunplay shit, yeah. we was winging it and just knowing we from where we from, right. <laughs> like it was just a depiction, a true depiction of our, uh, you know, how we grew up. Now, you got shot by the police. Yes, I did. Tell me how that scene was put together. It looked it real. You come out the house, you was cutting at him and shit. Yo, that's a good question. I don't think I never really got into how. So, the way this stunt, because it's a stunt now, right? Now, I came, I jumped out that second story. Because now, that's supposed to be Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, let's get to the point in time, right? Omaha, Nebraska. We shot in Rawway, New Jersey. Okay. That's with the little row houses is a project in the back of row where you can see the jail over the horizon. Wow. Right there, right? In the backyard, rollway prison. All right. I'm jumping out of that second story window, but then there's a famous uh, stunt dude named Eugene, and I don't remember his last name. And what happens when I get in the link and the getaway to do the getaway from the police, right? I'm busting that Desi. <laughs> right. Them 10 millimeter blanks, them motherfuckers are kicking. Boom, 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 boom. Jump in there. What happens is they scored, they scored, that means perforate the, the roof of the car. Okay. They scored it already to be to be pre ready for the impact behind that flatbed when I drive out of the cause then I, you know, I get shot, I'm trying to get away yeah. and then I pass out. Yeah. So they when they get to that point of impact. They take me out the car. Yeah. They put Eugene in there. So he the one that ate that. So he eats it. But this is what's scary about the scene, bro. Because he got to really hit that. that The roof is scored so it'll just crumple on like paper. Like paper. Right. He got to hit that that back, that seat back switch to go like this. Because the, the, the flatbed's coming in through the yeah. windshield. Well, he getting yeah. decapitated. Yeah. He cool. got one time to get this shit right. And he did it. I'm on the sideline watching like this. I'm crazy. Oh, he, the time it was impeccable because it's like the shit coming and he just slide back. Right. Then they just get him up out of there. They slide on by there. They slide me back in. Yeah. Right. Then drag me out like I was dead. But we don't know. Right. If Mark really died. How much labor is required to pull off a scene like that? How many takes? And, and well, see, in that case with the start car. The safety issues and all of this, they, it's one take. That's mm -hmm. that's one take. Now, I did the hop in and drive off a few times right. for them to get the one they wanted to match with Eugene in the car actually doing the stunt. But that, that's one time, bro. We ain't got one time to get the car right. We can't reset the roof, do none of that. Wow. Yeah, that's what's crazy. Them stuntmen, boy, they, they put it all out there. I got to respect it. On my way up here, I happened to be, I wasn't even looking. And somehow clockers, I don't know where it's at, Tubi, YouTube, it popped up. Wow. And I'm like, that's Weebay. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like, it just clicked. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, you know. Yeah. I mean, you you had a significant role in the movie, but you was like, you was like, maybe like the third yeah. main character or something yeah, like, like that. Yeah, like, I probably, like, in clockers, to my clockers or the... Or, clockers. Yeah, clockers, I was probably six, seven, eight for the... Cash exactly. Yeah, yeah. All right. So it took me a minute, and not only that, you had hair at the time. Yeah. Tell me what it was like. You said that you uh, responded to an open casting yes, call. Yes, I did. So that was your first time acting. First time acting, besides little school and church shit, right? Right. That on the fake what not so resume I had, I told him. But what it was is I'm in school, and a girl. Now you know I was playing ball football, and I, I'm rather smart. The high school was a piece of cake for me, right? Right. You know, doing shit with my eyes closed. But 
I wasn't with the extracurricular activity, so the math club, the glee club, the African culture club, all that. Nobody could get me and recruit me to be a part of. Right. I just wanted to play ball, my shorties, get fly. That was what I was on. That's what Haas was on. So Ariana was her name. She was in all of the above, right? Super extracurricular. Like she might be a doctor or a lawyer right now, I'm, I'm presuming. And she was like, all right, mister, because I always expressed to my friends and people that knew me, like, I want to be on TV. I think I'm funny. Right. So forget all the thug shit. I thought I was funny. I used to be compared to Eddie Murphy. Like, you know, when you got family in VA in Ohio, that's where I spent my summers. Okay. Right. In Cleveland and in, in, in uh, Richmond and, and, and in Petersburg. Okay. Yeah, okay. that's where I was at my summers. So they used to like to hear you say car, computer, because of that accent. And then I had that little box Eddie cut from Trading Places. Right. And when I, so I used to be told I looked like Eddie Murphy, and that was my favorite comedian. So just off that, I felt I'd be on TV on showbiz somehow. Being from Staten Island, though, not having access to that, like just the borough or two away, being from the city of Brooklyn, there's more opportunity. Right. It's really like that. So I didn't know where to start or spark that with. And then Ariana came at lunch one day. Said there's an open call for clock. Mister, I want to be on TV. Right. Do something with yourself. Yeah. You too smart. You are gonna be one of them ones that mess up out here, right? I guess that was her trajectory with me. But she put me on the spot. I'm at lunch holding court. You know, telling a story or some fly shit like I be doing. <laughs> and I said, and I said, I said, Forty Acres and the Mules presents open call. For the roller strike, for Spike Lee movie clock, there's 18 to 25 was the age. I was like 16. Right. right. It was my junior year before I was a senior. I wasn't even 17, 18 yet. I'm like, well, okay, that's strike one. I got to get around that. Where we got to go uptown <laughs> Harlem Saturday. Right? Right. right. This Saturday. Right. If it's Wednesday, it's Saturday. I looked around. I said, who's coming with me? Everybody do one of these little mm -hmm. Not me. I've been there. Going to, what? A movie. Anybody getting in no movie? Time. That Saturday came. I remembered. I popped up. Where that paper at? Like on some real 12 o'clock shit, you know. Oh, got on the ferry, took the train up there and went. And really the rest is the rest is history, right? Yeah. Because I go up there, I almost try to talk myself out of it. Once I got to the building, the school was a dude coming out. And I'm like, what's going on in there? And he was like, oh man, it's crazy. Wall to wall. I said, yeah, right, I probably ain't even got a chance. I probably should bail out right now, right? Try to get him to talk me out of Right. I came all the way from Staten Island, now I'm going to freeze up. My dude said, nah, you should go in there. You never know, my nigga. Nowadays, a nigga has helped you talk yourself out of it. Right. Yeah, back then in 94, it was like some real OG shit. And I said, damn, right like that, he was like, my nigga, what you got to lose? Went in there. And it's like, yo, stupid, short, big, tall, skinny, all type of niggas, old, young. And it's the auditorium, so it's filled from the front to the back. The last row is open. Right. I sat in the last row, my dude. And they got these ushers coming up and down, so to speak. And the, and the aisles, I guess, scouting. Yeah. Look, looking for looks. And, yeah. it, and then back then, I had the bridge. That's what you yeah. mentioned. Yeah. Right? Because... To my recollection, I did the old dirty shits first, and he might have saw me with the That's shits. the impression I got when I and seen you. I, I'm just saying, right? right? It was all my brothers, but right. I, 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 to my recollection, that's how that went. Right. So I had those, and I had a, a bottom bridge from Albie Square. Right. You know, the gold joints with the, with the rubies in them. Right. We weren't even doing diamonds yet and all of that. It was still damn near African medallions and shit right. like that for two minutes. So somebody peed me and was like, and I had I remember I had this wool low coat, this wool three quarter low coat I got from Reddit, Pennsylvania at the at the, at the outlet, outlet. Right. and I had the air raids on, I had the air raids on. So boom, he came up. He said, uh uh, he looked. I said, he said you. I said me. He said yeah. Take your hat off. Took the hat off. Joints fell out everywhere. Right. He was like, smile for me. Cheese on him. Man, right. he was like, yeah, come here. 
<laughs> These niggas in there start going crazy. Man. Yo, I was here before this nigga. Yo, why are the fuck is going on? And he's cheating it. I said, yo, call me, my dude. Let me get up out of here. Let me, when we go in here, talk to me nice. <laughs> Took me to the front. I'm casting director, infamous Aisha Coley, Ruth Carter from, you know, uh, Black Panther, right, Oscar winner, right. the costume director, Ruth was doing the costume director. Top notch shit, bro. Universal Studios, if I'm not mistaken, $30 million budget out the gate for a Staten Island nigga. Right? Mm -hmm. Come on, I'm coming in. Hot, hit the ground running, right? Got this shit after about eight auditions. Because every, after every audition, there's less and less niggas coming to the audition. But the one dude I keep seeing is Makai. So okay. on the last day, Spike had us pull up. It was a Saturday and it was the Black Expo. Because I was mad I was missing the Black Expo. You know, that's where you right. can see how many joints you could yeah. bag. Straight up. <laughs> I said, oh, he cutting into my baggage right now. I'm over here at this audition. But Roof came out the back with Spike. It was dark and there no lights on. None of that. A couple of us was there. Makai, me. I want to say my dude, L.A. Lawrence Adisa, who plays Stan. And that was it. And she came out from the back like, all right, y'all, I'll see y'all later. Like, when y'all all get situated, all get y'all roles sorted out. Because right. mind you, we're all auditioning still for this one role. Right. We ain't no spike filling in blanks. So we like, oh, that's when we peep, we low-key got a shot to still be in the movie. And then long story short, me and Makai actually rode the ferry back to Staten Island because he had a shorty that lived in one of the projects out here. Okay. So that was where we got cool. Before we even start filming, turned into brothers from riding the ferry back and forth to see his short. You know, he a Harlem dude. Yeah. So I'm, I'm showing him the ropes. Yeah, take this bus straight there, get off at this stop, you're going to be Gucci. Ain't nobody going to do, you know what I mean? Right. So that's how that went. And we got our roles. And I remember because they called the crib. And I was outside after school, some shit, and I came in the crib late. And my pops was like, yo, if you don't call these 40 acres and the mule people, they're calling here all day. I said, oh, word. You, I, got, I got the beat. But like, dad, you're supposed to beat me now. I'm going to walk for that. How right. you, wait till I get the